Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. My name is Martin Turner, and today we're going to talk about Express Tags. Now we've left this until quite late in the series because on the surface, Express Tags seem quite complicated. In fact, they're very easy to use for the, the reasons we're going to use them for, and they are very powerful indeed. Now you recall at the very beginning in the eight minute challenge, we imported all the text ready styled because we used Express Tags. And a few weeks ago, we imported a novel uh, and we did the same thing. So let's just do that again. So Command E or Control E in a PC. I'm gonna to go to the saxonthief.xtg. Uh, That's an Express Tags file. It's got interpret Express Tags turned on convert quotes on, and crucially, it's at the correct encoding. Now, normally, Express Tags will correctly encode if you give it the right information, but if you get it wrong and tell it to do the wrong thing, it will uh, cause Quark to quit. So don't play around with this with other documents open and unsaved. Um, doesn't need to go wrong, just if it does, that's probably the reason. So open, and it's going to import this, uh, and you'll see right now, oh, it's just imported, uh, and it's created these new styles. So I just had normal, and now it's created chapter, number, and title. And look, it's even formatted them. So uh, I've got the title here, uh, as title, uh, the author's name, uh, the number of the chapter, again, the chapter name, and the text. Well, that's uh, very easy to do. Uh, how is that achieved? Well, very simply, um, an Express Tags file uh, is just a text file with some very simple text tagging applied. There's no formatting at all. It's just a text file. Well, let's look at another example before we look at exactly how that works. I'm gonna go to my um, bibliography software uh, which is called uh, Bookends. Uh, and uh, what you've got here is uh, all the books I've read over the last uh, few years that you want to refer to. And it manages these for me uh, and it can do me an output. But if I output that to use in a book, I don't really want to have to uh, format everything separately. And I don't really want it to come through all in bold and italic and so on and have to do find and replace. So instead, it allows me, as, as many bits of software which are based in databases do, to format the output. And all I'm doing here is I'm using its codes, which are quite complicated and I had to work them out. I forgot about them afterwards. And I'm putting Quark's codes on top of that. So what's going to happen is it'll do at bibliography colon some text, at bibliography author colon some text, at bibliography extra colon. And what these at bibliographies are doing is that simply telling Quark uh, to style it with that paragraph style. Well, I already saved one of those. So let's just go to the finder and I'm going to open that up now. I'm opening this in a text editor. This is Text Wrangler, it's my favorite. Um, and this is exactly as it came out of bookends with one exception. That is I've pasted at the top this one line of code, uh, which you don't need to understand it, you just need to copy it from somewhere. And I'll show you where to get it from in a minute. With that done, I'm now in a position to import this. So let's go here. now. Um, in fact, I saved it with the wrong one. So uh, I've put in the file, that bit of code says it's, it's UTF-16. In fact, it's actually UTF-8. If I did 16, it would come in, but not correctly. If it was the other way around, it would just close Quark Express. So open, and what's happened? Now this is nowhere near as interesting uh, as the novel because it's not formatted it, or has it? What it's actually done is it's created style sheets uh, where they're specified in that file. So if I now do um, bib, and we're gonna make that uh, nine point uh, Helvetica bold, and okay. 
and I'm going to do author and we're going to make that off and we're going to make that nine point uh, Helvetica light uh, and I'm going to make this one six point Helvetica and I'm going to make this one six point Helvetica oblique and as a finishing touch we're going to just put a line in here so we will put rules all above 50% offset uh, and we're going to put three millimeters before and uh, instantly and if I just increase those columns now we've got uh, something that looks an awful lot more uh, like uh, a bibliography uh, you can see there are some places where it doesn't know what to send because uh, something was missing and indeed, because I did this in UTF-8, I should have saved it as UTF-16, uh, it's got the accents wrong. So that's something to, to look at. Often you have to play a little bit after you've done some express tags work. But the benefit is that you do the work once. Once you've got a proper import, you can keep importing. Now, you might say, well, that's all very well. Uh, but... Uh, it seems very complicated. Well, it's not really. To, to find out how to do this, let's just create some sample text. Some sample text. Um, oops. Uh, and uh, some more text. And I'm going to tag that with uh, a new thing called uh, title one. And this one I'm going to tag with text one. And now I'm going to save text and uh, we're going to save it as express tags. I'm going to use Unicode UTF-16 uh, and we're going to call this example text. I already used that before, we're going to use it again, replace it. And now I'm going to open that up uh, in my text editor, any text editor will do. Uh, just reload that from the disk. And you'll see what's happening here. So at the top, that bit of code I told you about before, You've got to have that in there. It will not work otherwise. But this text, which is telling it how to format those style sheets, you can just delete that. All you need is at name of style sheet, colon, then your text. At name of style sheet, colon, and then your text. And that's all there is to it. And as long as you have this bit of text in there correctly, and you're saving it with the same UTF formatting that you saved it with originally, it will work perfectly to save that. And all I then have to do is re-import that. Uh, if I get the encoding wrong, it will cause Quark Express to quit. So don't experiment with other documents unsaved and open. But once you've worked out how to do that, it will work very well. Well, again, you may be saying, I understand it's not too complicated, but what's the point? It seems a lot of work to do not very much. If it was just a way of manually tagging text, it would be a complete waste of time. But increasingly in this world of big data, uh, publishers are getting CSV files or tab separated files or other things that can be imported into Excel or Access or FileMaker or any database, and which you can then, in the database, apply some tagging to and get them to automatically format. We did a who's who a few years ago and everything was sent as Word files and somebody had been through and put italics and small caps and everything. But it was in a nightmare tagging it. And of course it wasn't entirely consistent because somebody had done it. And in fact, it had been proofread by somebody else and sometimes they corrected things, sometimes they hadn't. When we did it again, we used a database. Well, here's a database we can have a look at. So let's go to the screen. And we're going to look at the database I'm using for these videos. And you can see what we're doing here, the ones I'm still working on. Uh, and down here, what I've got is, um, I can just blow that up a little bit. I've got it to take a field and put a tag on the front of it. And if I now come into a new document, which I've just made, and just drag that in, 
uh, it's created my styles for me. So let's say that the uh, name is going to be in uh, Helvetica bold. And we're going to give that a three millimeters again and a rule uh, at 50%. Uh, and um, already it's beginning to come together. Now uh, we can go much more into that. We don't need to do that again. You've already seen it. But coming back to this, all it's doing is just putting that little bit of code at the top uh, and uh, it's then just tagging the text. These are fields uh, in the document, this eight minute challenge, remember that one, number one, date, uh, status accepted, and so on. And so when they come into Cork Express, uh, they come in uh, ready tagged and ready to be used uh, in a way that doesn't require more work. Well, that is Express tags. Now, you can, and if you want to go further, you can download the manual from Quark. I think 2016 is the most recent one. It's still the same for 2017, but you don't need to. If all you want to do is simple tagging of style sheets, which could be character styles as well, you can do that, but mainly paragraph styles, then what I've just shared with you is enough. You need to experiment a little bit. Uh, so again, as I say, you could crash Quark Express uh, by having the wrong encoding attached to the file. So be a bit careful, but it shouldn't take you very long. And if you're going to be working with a lot of data or even using a database, as I did with a novel, to format and manage the novel, then Express Tags can save you literally days of time. My name is Martin Turner. I'm the author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2017. It's all explained in there in more depth and more detail. Please do consider the book. I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, happy quarter.